Welcome back to Make Stuff Nation. Today we're going to be taking this 3 8 inch thick piece of 6061 T6 aluminum and making our dagger board. The snipe class rules call for the dagger board to be made from 6061 T6 aluminum alloy with a minimum thickness of 9.5 millimeters and a maximum thickness of 10.5 millimeters. They also list some dimensions for the tapering of the board as well as the radii of some of the corners. This is the included diagram of the dagger board as a couple important controlling dimensions. The first one being the length of the dagger board from the bottom of the keel to the bottom of the dagger board. It also lists dimensions that define the taper that's on the forward side of the dagger board. We do have some leeway in the design of the part of the board that's going to be up in the dagger board case. You can leave it a solid plate or you can remove material to reduce the weight. You can also change how the dagger board attaches to the handle. The piece of plate that I ordered is 3 8 of an inch thick and I've measured it several different places and it appears to be on average 9.9 .9 millimeters which is well within the allowable range of thickness. I had cut off a piece of the plate when I received it out of an area that's going to end up being waste and I've used this piece as a gauge to make sure that my dagger board slot and dagger board case dimensions were correct during construction so that the dagger board fits once I've completed it. The only dimension that is not given on the plan is the length of the dagger board from the bottom of the keel to the top of the dagger board case because this can depend on the design of your boat and vary slightly. I've measured this length on my boat at 345 millimeters which will give a total overall length of the dagger board from the bottom of the dagger board to the underside of the handle of 1196 millimeters. With all these dimensions now I can go ahead and plot these out on my aluminum plate and get it ready to shape. The first thing I need to do to lay out this dagger board on the aluminum plate is to make sure that all these corners are straight and square. I'm just going to check with the framing square that I know to be true. Then I can decide the orientation of the dagger board on the plate. Because the taper is on the front side of the dagger board, I'm going to put the front side of the dagger board where I already have planned for this to be waste. The aft edge of the dagger board meets the bottom of the dagger board at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to use this corner as my aft bottom corner and that'll make laying out some of these dimensions much easier. The bottom of the dagger board is 279 millimeters long, plus or minus three millimeters. So I can just measure that out from this corner. That looks good. On the aft edge of the dagger board, it's 851 millimeters from the bottom of the dagger board up to the bottom of the keel. From the keel to the top of the dagger board case or the bottom of the handle is 345 millimeters. Then I'll need some extending up so that I can attach it. My plan is to tenon the dagger board into the handle. So I'm going to add another five centimeters of extra metal to allow me to do that. Now I can use my square to project these lines over to the front of the dagger board. I also need to measure the 813 millimeters from the bottom on the forward side to mark out this taper. I'm also going to measure it on the aft side of the dagger board and transfer it across with a square just to check myself. The next dimension I need is the full width of the dagger board. It's 521 millimeters plus or minus 3 millimeters. I'm going to mark that on each of these horizontal lines. I can then connect these with a straight edge. Now I can draw the line that's the front tapered edge of the dagger board. So that's the generic dagger board. We could cut it out, slap a handle on it, and call it good. But I do like the idea of removing some of the material from the center of the dagger board here to reduce the weight. And obviously we're going to radius and taper these edges appropriately so that it's more hydrodynamic. Now I'm going to mark out this line that the bottom of this arc is tangent to. It's supposed to be 940 millimeters minimum above the bottom of the dagger board. Now I need to find out the radius or diameter of this arc. To do that, I'll take the thickness of these rails, so 51 millimeters, and multiply it by two, so that's 102. I need to subtract that from the full width, and that's gonna give me the diameter of this arc or circle. So that's a diameter of 419 millimeters, or a radius of 208.5. Next, I need to find the center of this circle so that I can mark it and set up a compass to swing this arc. I'll measure up 208 millimeters from this baseline. 
The center of the arc will fall somewhere along this line. Since this arc is centered fore and aft, I just take half the distance of the width. So 521 divided by two is gonna be 260.5. So I'll just measure that over from the side. So that should be the center of the hole. I'm also gonna mark out these rails, 51 millimeters wide. Last thing we need to do is swing this arc. I'll just use my beam compass that I made back at the start of this series and trace it out. With the arc drawn, it's a little bit undersized, but I'm gonna leave it that way because this will be rough cut to shape and then it'll all be blended in and sanded smooth so I don't have any stress risers. The radius of these two bottom corners is 13 millimeters. That equates to a one inch diameter hole. So I can just set this stencil tangent to the two edges and trace in the arc. This first cut went really well, and I've gone ahead and knocked off the sharp edges with a file. There's a bunch of different ways to make these cuts. You can use a jigsaw, sawzall, bandsaw with a metal cutting blade, or an angle grinder. I'm using a 48 tooth carbide tipped blade though for my circular saw, and it's uh, designated for wood and non-ferrous metals. It worked really well, it gave me a nice clean edge, probably much cleaner than I get with a jigsaw or sawzall. Anytime you're cutting metal, it's always a good idea to use some cutting fluid. I didn't use any cutting fluid on this first cut, but I'm going to try to use some light oil on these successive cuts and we'll see if it changes the performance. Obviously, anytime we're working with power tools or cutting items, we need to be wearing the proper personal protective equipment, but especially with metals. You really don't want any metal shavings getting in your eye or the possibility of a carbide tooth chipping off and injuring you. So I've got my goggles, my mask, and obviously hearing protection. Here's the dagger board roughed out of the piece of aluminum plate. The circular saw and bandsaw were definitely the way to go. The jigsaw I have is only a single speed, and even with a metal cutting blade, it didn't cut very quickly. It seemed that the gullets of the teeth would get filled up with aluminum, and I would have to turn it off, clean the teeth out, and then start again, getting about a quarter inch of cut at a time. I think using a variable speed jigsaw would work much better, and definitely using a blade with larger gullets or less teeth per inch. I filed the straight edges smooth to remove all the machining marks, and now I'm working on this radius. I need to make sure these edges are nice and smooth because any sort of nicks or machining marks create stress risers, which could lead to a failure of this dagger board. Once I get all these edges smoothed out, then I can mark the center line on the straight edges and taper the fore and aft sides of the dagger board. I finished filing, sanding, and polishing this radius, so now it's time to move on to mark the tapers. I have a cheap set of calipers set to 25 millimeters, and I'm just going to use it to scribe the line. Next, I need to scribe a center line down the edge. With this being 9.9 millimeters thick, we'll scribe it at just under 5 millimeters.
you doing up here? Lazy dog. What do you think of the finished dagger board? I think it turned out alright too. Well, as you just saw in the montage, I finished the dagger board by wet sanding it up to a 2000 grit finish. Then I used a buffing compound and a buffer to polish the dagger board. It's not a mirror finish, but I think it looks really nice and I might keep working on it off camera to see if I can get it a little bit shinier. Next, I laminated three pieces of black walnut to make the handle. I pinned the handle to the dagger board using aluminum and brass rod. One piece of aluminum rod was probably more than sufficient, but I thought the brass rod made a nice accent and feature of the handle. Once the epoxy was set, I flush trimmed the rod and then finished the handle. I still need to add a waterproof protective finish over top of this, but I'll end up doing that off camera. Another thing I did while I was working on the dagger board was cut holes in these watertight bulkheads to attach these inspection ports that will allow me to air out these compartments when the boat isn't being sailed. Oh, hey bud. How's it going? Now, I'm not going to permanently install these patches until after I finish the paint job. But this will allow me to put on the last coat of primer and then paint and not have to disturb that paint job when I go to install the hatches. It'll also let me seal this end grain. Here's a montage of how I cut these ports out with a router. As you just saw, I used a homemade circle cutting template in my trim router to cut out the circular ports in the forward bulkhead. Then I used a pattern bit and a pattern to cut out the hole in the aft bulkhead. That didn't go quite as smooth as the bit wanted to walk away from the pattern and due to the awkward position it was difficult to hold the router and bit up to the pattern, but it worked out well enough. These inspection ports are going to be sealed very securely to the bulkhead so I'm not really worried about any leaks. That's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. In the next episode, I hope to get my primer and finish the interior paintwork so I can move on to installing the decks. If not, I'll probably build the rudder. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching Make Stuff Nation, and we'll see you next time.